Welcome to another class for Eve University. You may know me as Amoni Panala, Zipporah Panala, or Camille Panala, depending on when you met me at Eve University. Um, I frequently get requests to record videos of classes I'm teaching, um, but I don't feel super comfortable putting people attending class on the spot, so I thought I would record these classes separate from the actual instruction that I give to people, um, and that's what this is. So we're going to dive into Introduction to Fleets. Um, as, as the joke goes, the best ship in the game is friendship. Um, now, because this isn't a real, uh, or because this isn't a class that's happening live, there are no questions to, to put in the class questions channel. If you have questions, please leave them as a comment on my videos and I will try to get to as many of them as possible. I can't promise to get to all of them, but I will do my best to answer as many as I can. So in this, we're going to cover what fleets are. Uh, we're going to talk about why you might want to join a fleet. We're going to talk about how you can find fleets to join. We'll talk about the different roles of a fleet. Uh, getting ready for a fleet, fleet communication, and the common commands you'll hear in a fleet, and um, well, and then I'll I'll try to answer some questions that I hear often before they get asked as a comment on this video, but uh, let's get started here. Um, so, what is a fleet? It is a temporary group of pilots. Um, it does not necessarily need to be people from the same corporation or alliance. It could just be um, a bunch of random people all throughout New Eden getting together to fly together for a specific purpose. Um, it is worth knowing, noting that by default, everyone in a fleet is purple they show up as purple on your, in your overview and your brackets. Um, and so if you hear people talking about like purple uh, in reference to ships, that's referring to fleets and people who are in the same fleet as you. Um, when you are in a fleet, you have a shared chat channel called Fleet Chat. This is often used to pass information to one each other. To each other. It could be a destination. Um, it could be um, the name of a pilot who is performing a specific role um, or who you're, um, who you're supposed to uh, follow things like that. Um, it can also, fleets can also be used for things like um, fleet warps or warping together as a group. Um, the fleet commander can uh, warp an entire fleet from one place to another just by um, right clicking and selecting warp fleet 2. Um, very simple stuff there. It can also be used to share information on targets and who needs reps or repairs. Um, that is the EVE equivalent of healing in this game. Um, th that happens through broadcast windows, and we'll talk a bit about broadcasting in a little bit here. But there are a number of different types of fleets. And there is some overlap between them, as you see in my uh, screen here. So 
So on the player versus environment, PvE side of things, we have mission fleets, right? Uh, it, if you are in EVE University, you've probably seen uh, things like the Sunday Gun Day, uh, Forward Operating Base, um, Forward Operating Base, Mission Running. Um, you might also have mining fleets. These are pretty common in EVE University, especially in our high sec staging in Stackmon. We have combat sites. This is uh, very common throughout high sec, low sec, and null sec, as well as uh, WHC. Uh, and then there's also incursions, which is high level PvP. Um, or, sorry, high level PvE. And in the middle here, we have standing fleets. Now, we put this in the middle because you might be in a standing fleet. And a standing fleet is a fleet that is formed specifically so that people can be involved in the day-to-day -day goings on of your corporation. Now in Eve University we have several stagings. Uh, we have Stackmon, PC9, we have WHC, um, we also have uh, our pretty uh, hardcore faction warfare group. And so you might see standing fleets specifically for these staging areas. And that is just to sort of help um, localize the information that is passed along. It does not do a whole lot of good for folks in Stackmon to know what is happening in PC9. It does not particularly help people in PC9 to know about what's happening in Faction Warfare. So Standing Fleets provide a useful way of staying up to date and connected with your corp mates. Um, and then of course, under that I have Faction Warfare and these two things are related. Uh, faction Warfare is both PVE and PVP. Faction Warfare uh, can be plexing um, and that means jumping an act, a specific kind of gate or taking a specific kind of gate holding uh holding the room from any potential invaders for a certain amount of time maybe shooting a couple rats and then after the time has expired you get a certain amount of uh you get a certain amount of lp for your trouble Faction Warfare can also be PvP, and oftentimes is PvP. That's a, a large attraction of Faction Warfare, is it's some structure to PvP. It forces people to fight each other. Uh, there, are, there are six factions in the game at this time, or at the time of recording. There is the four Empire factions, Galente versus Kaldari, Minmatar versus Amar, and then you also have the Angel Cartel and the Garistas, who are fighting, um, who are fighting the Empires. Players who side with a particular faction are going to fight against other factions, particularly Minmatar versus Amar, Galente versus uh, uh, Keldari. And then you will have uh, pirate factions facing off against their respective uh, Kaldari and Galente or Minmatar and Amar. So it can be either PvE or PvP, and that can change in a moment, depending on what's going on. On the strictly PvP side, we have roams. Now these are just fleets that decide we're going to jump from gate to gate trying to find something 
uh, we'll start out in say PC9 and we'll go until we find something to shoot or we all blow up. E fleets are taking filaments into a random part of Nullsec and finding a fight that way. You also have quick response fleets. Now there is some confusion about what quick response fleets were. Um, several months ago, we were uh, defending PC9 from from some structure bashing, and we were using quick response fleet in a different way than what we mean here in this class. Quick response fleets are generally spring out of standing fleet. And what happens is usually there is someone or a whole fleet of someones who show up and decide they're going to fight. When a doctrine is called or a um, group of pilots get together and decide to form an organized response to this, that is a quick response fleet. And usually it happens very rapidly. Ideally, within just a few minutes after getting the crucial intel that lets you know that there's something happening. You also have strategic operations or strat ops. These are generally uh, very involved fleets. These are fleets that involve several pilots. Uh, it requires a large command structure. Usually there's a lot of logistics involved in terms of getting the ships, getting the pilots, getting everybody to the staging system, wherever that might be. And it can be to protect a structure or destroy a structure or hold a particular system from an invasion um, or perhaps invading a system, as the case may be. Those are strategic operations or strat ops. And last but certainly not least, you have black ops or blops. Now, black ops is a particular type of fleet that requires specific ships. All of these ships are fitted with covert cloaks. That is generally the, the primary concern is that the ship is fitted with covert cloak. And the reason for this is that the Black Ops uses a, a specific ship that can bridge from one system to another without using gates. So it can just jump to particular systems without needing to use gates. This is the use of uh, sinusurial technology or sinos. Blops are a lot of fun. They are more skill intensive. They have higher requirements to participate. But they are great fun and you can learn a lot about a particular kind of PvP. Now, if you are interested in joining a fleet, it's relatively simple. If you go up to the little E on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see the Neocom, and that'll bring up a menu. Go down to Social, and then select the uh, fleet. And it has a little icon, it's three chevrons. You can also right click on fleet in the menu and select uh, create a shortcut. So it'll show up on your, on your Neocom and you can have a shortcut to it. This is something I highly recommend for folks because um, it is something you should be using on a regular basis, if not every time you log in. When you open fleet, you're going to see a window similar to the one 
that I have here. It's going to show the fleets that are available to you. Now, in my example here, uh, I have Alliance, and it's showing all the fleets that are available to my Alliance. So right now, basically all you're seeing is standing fleets. I see PC9 standing, Wormhole Community standing, and then there's also a mining fleet going on. So these are the fleets that are available to me as a U Unista, as a member of EVE University. Many fleets in EVE University are advertised in advance to get the best turnout in terms of pilots who are going to participate. We use the in-game calendar, which can also be found as a Google map. We replicate that on a Google map, which you can access uh, via the instructions on our wiki. We also post forum advertisements. So we make little posts advertising the fleets that are coming up. Now, not every fleet is going to be advertised in advance. Sometimes like quick response fleets uh, happen. Sometimes yeet fleets happen impromptu. Sometimes roams happen impromptu. It's really, it's really about whatever is going on in the moment but there are definitely going to be some fleets on the calendar in advance that you can find. You can also find advertisements for them in the forum posts, in our uh, fleets forum. It's also a good idea to keep an eye out for Discord pings because we use pings to communicate urgent information. Generally, when there is a QRF, a quick response fleet, there will be a Discord ping to let people know, hey, time to log in, something's happening. Outside of EVE University, you may be interested to play with people who are uh, doing different things than you. Maybe you want to get a feel for what other corporations are like, or just hang out with other people for a little while. Or maybe you just want to do content that EVE University doesn't do very often, if ever. That's an opportunity to join an NPSI. Now, there are a number of NPSIs, and you might be wondering, wait a minute, wait a minute, what is an NPSI? NPSI stands for Not Purple Shooter. These are the fundamental rules of engagement for these kinds of fleets, which means if you're not in our fleet, we're going to shoot you. Now, obviously, there are some exceptions, right? In EVE University, we have our own rules of engagement. We don't shoot people who are blue to us. We don't shoot our own court members without permission. And we don't, uh, and we generally don't shoot friendlies uh, without permission. There are some exceptions like Fight Club, but it is important to, to pay attention that even though it is called MPSI, that does not mean you have free reign to shoot blues or people in court without their permission. If you are interested in this kind of thing, it might be worth checking out Fun Inc. Even better with friends. Uh, they have a public channel in-game. They also have a website. Um, EBWF Public is their in-game ch channel. Now, Fun Inc. is just one of many organizations, but the cool thing about Fun Inc. in particular is that they try to keep a, a calendar of various NPSI groups that are out there doing things. So this could be an opportunity to see what's out there. If you are interested in doing bomber fleets, maybe you want to go on a couple fleets with Bombers Bar. If you are interested in gate camps, maybe you want to go on a gate camp with Spectre Fleet. If you are interested in a, um, if you are interested in in flying really fast through through Nullsec and just 
wiping out anything that comes in your path, maybe you want to go on a uh, go on a shrink wrap fleet with uh, the Fun Ink folks. So it's really it's really up to you, but there is lots of content out there, and fleets are a gateway to having access to those things. Now, I'm going to be speaking more specifically about EVE University here, but some of it carries over into other fleets. Um, it is a good idea to gather as much information as you can before you go on a fleet. There may be ships, specific ships, that you are expected to fly. It might be a good idea to check if you have the skills to fly those ships. It is a good idea to know what the fleet is going to do. For example, if they're planning on shooting a structure, EVE University cannot participate. That's not something we do. We maintain neutrality by not shooting at structures without approval from the, either the FC team or a director. It also helps to get there early, especially if it's your first time. If you get there early, you can ask questions. You can uh, get your ship and get it fitted up. Make sure that the rigs are, are, are put in there. Make sure that you're ready to go. You can also make sure that you have a clean clone. Nobody likes losing expensive clones that they didn't mean to lose, especially your training clone. And of course, pay attention to the price of the ship. If it's a particularly expensive ship, be aware that it might hurt if you lose it. So only fly what you're prepared to lose and check if there's SRP available. Some, some NPSI groups even offer SRP, especially Bomber's Bar, which will uh, pay out if you lose a ship bonus points if you're funny about how you died. Now in fleets, there is generally a, a structure and organization to fleets, especially PvP fleets. Um, in the command roles, you're going to have the fleet commander, FC, the second in command, 2IC, and sometimes you might even have a 3IC, third in command. These people are going to be giving orders. They're going to tell you where to go, what to do, when to do it. You're also going to have DD or DPS. This is the, this is the people who do all the damage. They're the ones that get to shoot the guns the most. Um, no fleet is complete without damage. There's also Logi. As I said before, this is EVE Online's version of healers. Um, Logi are, or logistics, they are, um, they are the ones who are going to repair your ships in the middle of fights. You also have scouts also sometimes referred to as hunters. They're slightly different, but for this purpose, scouts are hunters. They go ahead of the fleet and try to find something to shoot. Tackle, which is sometimes the same as the scout, uh, or it might be an independent role. These are the people or ships that go out and try to keep the ships you're trying to shoot from running away. Uh, and yes, ships will definitely try to run away, and some are very good at it. You also have E-War, Electronic Warfare. There are a number of kinds of electronic warfare, and if you saw my video on electric, uh, electronic warfare, you know what I'm talking about. But E-War decreases the enemy's effectiveness in battle. This could be jams, this could be damps, this could be target painters. It could be 
neutralizers. There are also pickets. Now this is more for PvE content, but certainly you might have a picket in a PvP situation. Um, if you are doing something like a gate camp, there might be times where it is a good idea to have a picket. These are these are sort of the defensive version of a scout. They sit in a single place and they watch for any threats. So in a PvP or sorry PVE situation, they might be looking for known gankers who are coming into system, and they're going to warn the fleet before anything really bad happens. You might also have a booster. Uh, typically, boosters are referred to as links. Um, these are these are people who have trained their command bursts to provide buffs to the rest of the fleet. This is a support role, um, but it is a very important support role. Now this is more specific to EVE University, but of course there are um, there are comms for most other fleets. I don't know of too many fleets that don't use comms. For EVE University specifically, we use Mumble. I can already hear the people who are not in EVE University grumbling in front of their uh, computers. Um, yes, Mumble has its problems, but it's what EVE University uses They've been using it for quite some time now, or at least in the four years that I have uh, been in and out of EVE University. Mumble is a lossless voice over internet protocol communication software. It allows you to talk to other people in real time, regardless of where they are uh, in, in the world. We use this uh, to communicate information that would take too long to type up, or maybe it's just easier to type while you're trying to fly your ship. It's also just nice to hear people's voices sometimes, you know? I will say that it is important to have your push to talk button set up. Nobody likes it when you're just sitting in front of your computer and you start belching or coughing or passing gas. And all of that gets picked up by your microphone because you don't have your push to talk set. It's super annoying. <laughs> um, so if you are a member of EVE University and you're going to be in Mumble, please take the time to set up your push to talk button. And I will go one step further. Don't just set up your push to talk button. Set up your whisper key as well. All of those instructions are on the wiki about how to set up mumble, both your push to talk and the whisper key. The difference between the two is your push to talk button is shouting to the entire uh, channel which includes all the subchannels, and a whisper is specific to the channel or subchannel that you are in. This becomes important if you're going to be a part of big fleets. So if you want to be a part of big fleet actions, it's a good idea to get in the habit of using your whisper key. Because when you are in bigger fleets, the Fleets might be split up based on their roles into different subchannels, which means that the Logi can talk to each other without being uh, interrupted by the E War wing. The E War can talk to each other without being interrupted by DPS, and DPS can talk to uh, to each other without having to hear anything that E War Logi or anyone else is saying. And and most importantly. It means that the scouts and the FC can be in the same channel and talk to each other while 
the fleet is happening and communicate important information about what kind of uh, content is out there to shoot. And all the rest of the other people can still talk to each other. Now in EVE University, our comms are generally open. We don't use combat comms very often, but when they do happen, people will call for combat comms. Normally, people can just talk to each other. It's fairly relaxed. All we ask is that you keep conversations friendly, uh, family friendly. Um, we don't use profanity in comms. We don't engage in talk of politics. We don't use any language or, or talk that is discriminatory or bigoted or hateful towards any particular group. We really want to make it as inclusive and welcoming to as many people as possible. In the event that comms become closed or combat comms are called, that means that something is happening and it's very important that information is heard clearly and oftentimes on the first attempt to communicate that information. Oftentimes when that information needs to be communicated, somebody will interrupt whatever conversation is happening by saying check check or break break this tells you that it's time to be quiet give whoever called it a moment to communicate whatever information they are trying to communicate It is very important that you don't start talking again until somebody has indicated that it is okay for open comms again. In a fleet, it is important not to ramble. It is important not to give overly long explanations of things. Just say what you're going to say. Say what you need to say. Be done with it. It is also important to speak clearly and speak calmly. It may be hard if there's a lot going on, but you do what you can. If you are communicating directly to the FC, it is a good idea to try and communicate as much information as you can that is necessary. First, let them know who you are, right? Let them know what's going on, what's the situation, right? And if it's relevant, where are you? In comms, we generally want to speak in third person. So instead of saying, I need reps, I need reps, I need reps, say, Amoni needs reps, Amoni needs reps. Uh, Amoni is in structure, things like that. Communicating in third person helps because if you just say I, Your FC and the others in your fleet are not necessarily going to always recognize your voice, especially if you're new to a fleet or you're in an MPSI where there are lots of people in fleet and not everybody shows up to the same fleet every time. If you are unsure about whether you are in combat comms, just ask. Wait a moment when you join fleet. It is a good idea to just wait a moment. Listen. I'm always frustrated when people, the first thing they do once they connect on Mumble is they say, Hello! And 
I get that they're trying to be friendly, but if if there's important information being communicated, that can be incredibly disruptive. So be sure to join comms, listen for a moment in case there's important information being communicated that you're just now jumping into. If nobody is speaking, you can speak up and say, hey, are we in combat comms? If that makes you anxious, right in fleet. And if you happen to know that it's close comms and you need to say something or you want to say something, post it in fleet. Unless, the, unless you know that you are supposed to be speaking during closed comms, just write it in fleet. All right. Let's talk about some commands that you are going to hear frequently. The first is align to or align. So in my example here, I have the Austin Gelly gate. I, as the FC, would say fleet, align, 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 Austin Gelly, align, 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 Austin Gelly. This means that you are going to click approach, or sometimes it says align, depending on the context. This points your ship in a particular direction, and you gain velocity in that direction till you are at full sublight speeds. Do not warp, do not jump at this stage. You're just pointing your ship in a particular direction and gaining velocity until you reach full velocity. If the FC says, hold on contact, gate is red, this means that you are going that you are warping to a gate or maybe a wormhole, but you're not jumping. You're just staying on the gate and you're going to wait. On the flip side, the FC might say jump on contact, gate is green, go, 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 jump the gate. That means you get to click the button that says jump. Make sure that you have the gate or wormhole that you that you are uh, that you are meaning to jump though, because if you accidentally click another gate, you're gonna warp to the wrong gate and jump it. Some FCs will say make make best speed to, and then the name of a system or burn to the name of a system. This is generally a command to reduce the amount of time it takes to get a fleet from one place to another. It is generally only done in situations where we know it's safe to move the fleet in fits and starts. Uh, it basically just means go to this destination as quickly as possible on your own. There will be no fleet warps. You just got to go. Generally speaking, commands are given in threes. So like align, 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 jump, 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 warp, warp, warp. These are given generally so that it is not confused. Everybody hears it. When you are in a fleet, you might also hear some instructions about how to fly your ship. You might hear anchor on Amoni. 
that means you're going to right click on my name and you're going to keep it range a thousand meters. This helps keep the fleet together. You might also hear the fleet commander say, you know, prop mod on, prop mod off, and this means that you're going to turn on your micro warp drive or your afterburner, whichever your ship has. This is going to get the fleet moving faster at sublight speeds. And in the event of something catastrophic happening, the fleet commander or the 2IC or the 3IC might say, fleet scatter, scatter, scatter. Then it's time to bug out. It's time to get out of there. Now, EVE University has a overview, which every member of EVE University should be using. And there is a specific tab called Warp Out, which will give you planets, asteroids, and moons that you can warp to. One thing I will tell you is, in general, it is a bad idea to warp to a moon. Always warp to planets, don't warp to moons. The reason for this is that sometimes there are structures on moons that have guns that will shoot you and you will die. It's not fun. So, instead, warp to planets, warp to asteroid belts, warp to other gates. Just keep warping around until the FC tells you something else. Also, don't work to the sun. Uh, a lot of people expect you to go to the sun, and so if you go there, it is very easy to find you. Now, when it comes to combat, there are a few more commands here. So, I might say, uh, lock up Jane Doe. Lock up Jane Doe in the Retribution. Now this means that I want you to lock target on Jane Doe in the Retribution. I don't want you to shoot. I don't want you to, to scram or point or web or do anything else. Just lock up Jane Doe in the Retribution. This is going to allow you to later shoot Jane Doe, if that's what's needed. And to further drive home the point, I might say, do not aggress. Lock up Jane Doe in the Retribution, do not aggress, do not aggress. Just lock up Jane Doe in the Retribution. That is typically how it's going to set. Your FC might also call primary, secondary, and so on. These are the order of targets that you're going to shoot. If I say Jane Doe in the Retribution is primary, Mary Jane in the Incursus is secondary, Carl Funk in the Caracal is tertiary, right? That means you're going to shoot Jane Doe first, then you're going to shoot Mary Jane, and then you're going to shoot Carl Funk. If your FC says spread tackle, that means that the FC wants you to take your warp scrambler or your warp disruptor on your on your ship and put it on a random ship that's nearby or that's close by something that you can get within range of once you have your scram or your point on that ship it is a good idea to call it out in fleet i've got mary jane in the incursus tackle Mary Jane in the curses is tackled. 
Sometimes the FC will say, you are only. Uh, this means you can use modules that do not do damage. So this could be neutralizers, this could be target painters, jams, damps, webs, scrams, points, all that good stuff. But you're not doing damage. And this is typically called for things like a pod, so that everybody can get on the kill mail, right? Especially the Lodgy, who have generally no guns on their ship, but they might have like one or two drones to get in on the kill mail. When you need to leave a fleet, don't be overly dramatic, especially if you die. There is nothing worse than having people say, oh no, I'm going down, I'm going down. Ah, uh, I'm dead, I'm dead. That stuff is not gonna fly, don't do that. Um, it, it, it makes it harder to communicate important information and yes, people will die, and it and it is actually worth communicating to the FC, like, hey, I'm leaving, or hey, my ship blew up and I need to go. Um, put that in fleet chat. Just say, hey, uh, minus one Logi, or minus one DD, minus one E War. Just put that in the fleet chat. Um, it is a courtesy to thank the FC for the fleet. Um, some people put. Uh, uh, thanks for the fleet FC, um, or what is it? There's an initialism that people use. TFF FC, right? Thanks for the fleet, or something like that. Uh, you get the general idea. But it is it is a courtesy to thank the FC for the fleet because they are putting in uh, some effort to try and make content happen so that you can have something to shoot at. And of course, if there is an issue with a fleet, uh, it may be a good idea to let someone know. You don't need to. You don't need to be super negative on comms. You don't need to be aggressive or rude. In Eve University, we have student advocates for when conflict comes up. Just reach out to a student advocate and say like. Hey, this interaction happened and I wasn't able to resolve it in the moment. Maybe I could use some help trying to clear the air. And as I said, there's there's no live class, so there won't be any questions. But if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. I have tried to answer some or anticipate some questions that people ask me frequently, but maybe you'll have some good questions for me and I look forward to them. Go ahead and leave those as a comment on this video. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. Uh, maybe subscribe to the channel so you can be made aware when new videos come out. And of course, uh, if you want to be notified when the next video comes out, go ahead and hit the bell, set up your notifications, all that good stuff. But until next time, fly dangerously, my friends.